This video is going to be a little bit different. This time we're not going to build a jitter-based oscillator, it's going to be a jitter-based audio effect. Or rather, a whole range of those. One way of loading audio into jitter other than the jit poke object is a jit buffer. Basically, this object works the same as a normal buffer, only that it stores and outputs audio data in a jitter matrix. We give it a name, a length, and a channel count. The length actually doesn't matter because we're going to replace it and sample memory will be resized anyway, so let's set it to minus one and the channel count to one for simplicity. We add a FPS GUI here so we can look at the matrix dimensions. One thing we have to take care of is the length of the output matrix because it's set to 44 by default, which is a bit small. So we send it the get frames message, which will give us the number of frames or rather samples out the right outlet. We look for the frame message here, subtract one, and send it to the output last attribute. Now we trigger output again and see that the output matrix now has the correct amount of cells. For what we are going to do, however, we want that matrix data to be two-dimensional rather than one-dimensional. We want a square matrix more precisely. So we take the square root and round. Unfortunately, there is no seal object in Max, and for this tutorial I didn't want to instantiate a JavaScript object or do a complex if-then calculation, so round will have to do here. Okay, so a one-plane two-dimensional matrix of float32 values, we'll name that buffer as square, and set the right dimensions. So how do we get that one-dimensional matrix data into a two-dimensional one of equal cell count? Well, the obvious way would be to chit spill it into a list and then again chit fill it into that matrix. Turns out that this approach isn't feasible because max caps the list length at 2 to the 14th equals 16,384 values, which is a bit short for all the data. So we'll have to find another way. For this demo, the most useful way seemed to be to jit iter over the values and manually set the cell values of the target matrix. So we have to do a little calculation here to return column and row indexes, or rather the x and y coordinates in the matrix. set the values via set cell respectively. So where do we want to go with this? Eventually, I want to be able to pipe this matrix into any jitter video effect and then again construct an audio buffer from that. Let's draft this part up front. Okay, first we need a buffer of proper size, so we send in size in SAMPs. We also set up a groove object for playback.
Fine. So to get all your data in there, we need another chit iter and a poke to feed data into the buffer. Poke wants a sample value and a buffer index to write it to, so we kind of reverse the process from above to get a single row from those x and y coordinates. To check out if that process works, let's just pipe the input matrix in there and see if the output sounds as we expect. Seems fine. All right, let's try out some video effects. There's a ton of what you can do here and we'll dive into more effects in the later episode, but here are some pointers. The chit op is the Swiss army knife of the chitter domain. You can do all sorts of arithmetic and logical computations. Just look at the help page. We'll take the greater than p op here, which means pass if greater than. You can think of it as a kind of noise gate in our case. Every point in the matrix is evaluated if it's greater than the value set at the right outlet, and if so, passed through. Convolution in the two-dimensional space domain is an operation that assigns a new value to a pixel based on the surrounding cell's uh, local operation. In that respect, it is very similar to an FIR audio filter. If we, for example, calculate an average of the cell and its surrounding eight neighbors, the so-called convolution kernel, we get a blur, a graphical low pass. Let's try that out. We have to set every cell in the convolution kernel to 1 ninth equals 0 0.111 to do this. Chitrotter is a global operation. That means all matrix cells are updated simultaneously. We can, for example, scale or rotate an image in this way. There are four different bound modes which you can look up in the help patch. We're going to use wrap two here and rotate by an angle specified in radians. So you again have an interesting pattern here, which you can explore further. 
We are going to look at it again in a later episode. Meanwhile, have fun implementing your own effects.